Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Going to look at Keith Giffen's Trencher number one here today. Before we begin, I want to invite all of you to like, follow, and subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Hit that notification button, the little bell icon next to subscribe. That'll let you know when we post a new video. It'll give you a leg up on the Kayfabe effect. The Kayfabe effect, whenever we uh, talk about comics, a lot of you want to add them to your collection. So uh, if you get that early notification, you'll be the first ones looking for them at your local comic shops, eBay, Amazon, wherever you buy comics or track down old comics. It'll give you a leg up. And also let these videos play through to the end. That encourages YouTube's algorithm to share Cartoonist Kayfabe with other comics fans who haven't discovered our channel yet. It's how we grow the channel. We just surpassed 60,000 subscribers. So thank you all very much for helping spread the Cartoonist Kayfabe word. All right, Ed, going to dive into uh, Keith Giffen's Trencher from 1993. This was like wave two of the Image Comics uh, revolution. They just expanded quick. After that first couple of books came out and sold huge numbers, it feels like they opened the doors to anybody that they were friends with. Uh, Keith Giffen, a notable creator throughout comics uh, going back into the 80s. So they give him an invitation and he comes up with Trencher, hot off of uh, doing Lobo at DC Comics. And um, the reason that I want to talk about Trencher is the visual style. Yeah. This drawing style is bonkers. I don't know any other comics that look anything like this. You know, the other thing with image, the early image, is computer coloring sort of changes a little bit of the way people are approaching comic book art at the time. Better uh, production values was one of Image's early, uh, you know... Sales point. Yeah, definitely. And it feels like Giffen almost invents this style to be like, let's see what we can do with these new uh, fancy colors and, and good paper. I've heard that it was drawn straight to ink. I can't confirm that, but... I've never seen anything that looks like this. Absolutely, man. This this is such a specific time in my life uh, because I was so late to the game when it came to Image Comics just because I would go to the grocery store in Kmart to get my comics. I had no idea about Image Comics even existing. And it was kids in school who were buying the stuff like... Uh, like a, a, you know like it was pokemon cards or something like just like speculator kids and it would be jocks and shit they would have these binders where you could slide comics in and, and like a plastic and because you're not supposed to open them yes. and 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 they're worth all this money and they were talking about these image comics and it's like damn i guess i can't do anything right because like now comics are cool and i don't even know what these comics <laughs> are you're talking about so when i became acquainted with the image i and I still didn't even know what the main titles were. Like, I didn't even know, like, McFarlane and Rob Liefeld were doing shit, really. Uh, I went to Bill and Waltz at Century 3 Mall, and the bubble has burst, honest to goodness. Like, when I was in middle school, the, the bubble had burst, and you could get, uh, it was like 10 packs for, 10 packs of Image Comics for like $5 or something. Maybe even less. And uh, this is how I got my trenchers. Like, I got issue one and four. In, in these these five packs, uh, Trencher is something that the kids would show off as just like, this is insane. I don't even know what I'm looking at uh, for the same reasons. Like, like what is this, this art style? But uh, when I got these things, it's definitely good luck reading it. Yes. Yeah, we're going to uh, we're going to flip through this issue one and, and, and maybe even a couple of these other issues. But it is not uh, going to be story centric. <laughs> you know, here's the thing, man, like with with my like sort of limited Keith Giffen knowledge, right? I have like Defenders comics where he's doing his like his his Kirby. We we know about the um worth looking at by the way. I'd like to dig oh, into yeah, some yeah, of those. Oh yeah, 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 super cool, man. Uh we we know about the um Alak Sinner kind of comics uh that that you know where he's where he's um cribbin mm -hmm. from from uh, Homeboy. And then like the Lobo comics come out and it was a like as a kid, it, it would be like the kids of your generation, like the kids who were just a little older than me were fucking with those Lobos and shit like that. And I was a little young for that. So, uh, Bisley is a late discovery for me. And when we've been going through these Biz comics, like you'll see the, the panels that Giffen hinges on and is like, I want to do, I want to try some of that. And then that's what we have here. Uh, like it's, it's him sort of like, leaning on these very few little ticks that Bisley does in the background, but just makes it a complete whole style. Yeah, and 
ostensibly the story is that Trencher is, is kind of like this, they call it a chassis over and over again, but he's sent to collect these souls that have gotten out, and a lot of them are like superhero souls. So he's like a repo man for, uh, I, I guess, wayward super souls or something. <laughs> Um, don't need a lot of explanation there, but the Lobo part is important because Bisley does the first two Lobo miniseries yeah. on top of Giffen layouts. And then Giffen does, I think, the third one, which is Infanticide. And in the beginning of that series, it looks kind of like Bisley. Yeah. You know, like it seems like he's trying to make this transition or he's inspired by Bisley. And by the end, it looks like Trencher. So it's really an interesting series. And it kind of makes me wonder if the opportunity to do Trencher popped up when he had a full schedule. And that this drawing style was some sort of a quick drawing style that was done to maintain a schedule, but also to not miss an opportunity to be like, yeah, you want me to do an image book? Sign me up, but I got to make it, make it fit, you know? There's, there's, you got to strike while the iron's hot, so Absolutely, to speak. absolutely. Like, like, because there's, this is, for the, for the grizzled vets, they knew that this was unsustainable. Yes, that's true. And and we saw like Simonson say so before Image even started in those in that early wizard. Yeah. And uh we we talked with Rick Veach, like the 1963 guys who really like abused their bodies to make sure that they get the 1963 issues out because mm -hmm. if they were to be resolicited there were less and less comic stores even in existence as the months would go by and shit like that. So like you can lose an order of magnitude in terms of units sold if you have to resolicit because there's that many less comic shops. So this guy's been around since the seventies. Like, let's churn and burn. Let's get as many comics out there. And like, I'm sure. I mean, this probably is his biggest money maker ever. You know? Right. Um, lettering sucks ass, except for all of this kind of lettering. Like the dialogue that is a Windows ninety five font with just like. Uh, a template, like an ellipse template, and straight edges for the tails. I don't love the ellipse template. I don't care at all about the font. I like this font better than the ones that are like a really poor pseudo handwritten font. And also, like, this just feels like manga to me. Like, it, it, it doesn't hurt my feelings the way some mechanical lettering does. It's super incongruous. It is with, incongruous. With, with the artwork, and just it doesn't work. The with character it. to me is totally like we're cutting promos on image. Because he even has this line here, like, uh, measuring their manhood by caliber, like there ain't always someone with a bigger gun. But, I mean, it is, look how tiny his head is. He's just this gigantic bruiser with, with guns and bullets galore. Like, that feels like, how, what's an image book? What sells a lot at image? And then the other piece is these weird superhero characters. Like, this guy fights with what looks like bloody snot coming out of his nose is, uh, <laughs> is his main weapon, which... I guess works. He's throwing Trencher around pretty good. Hey, man, you can really uh, tell what's going on. <laughs> it's hey. wild stuff. The The hero of this series, of course, is whoever tries to color it. <laughs> Could you imagine dealing with that? I've tried to yeah, like buy an original it. art page of this, and it is so wild looking to see this stuff as just line art. Yeah. You know, just black and white. Yeah, absolutely, man. But pretty straightforward stuff. Um, <laughs> you know, the line art notwithstanding, but I mean, it's just superhero fights, right? And again, you can see, you're the dude who does Lobo? Oh, right. You know, you're fighting a guy with, with bloody snot for a weapon. You're punching through him. Um, Trencher just like gets Lobo knife. decimated. <laughs> the ponytail. Oh, yeah. See, that, see that, <laughs> that's what this is, man. Like, I never know what I'm looking at, really. A hundred percent, that's what this is. Imagine if this were colored with that terrible, like, a brown palette. But Absolutely. sometimes they really miss. Like, like that is just, uh, talk about losing your character against the background. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it feels, uh, I mean, this feels British. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of that, um, like a 2000 AD or even a deadline sensibility. He does several of these. Like, they're going to end up in Vegas at one point. All of this kind of, like, street signage and stuff, I love it. It's beautiful lettering. Like, it, it's insane. Like, if that's Keith Giffen doing that, it's like, Keith, j just that letter your dialogue bubbles. Who cares? I mean, man? it has to be him. It's right in line style-wise with the rest of the art. That's yeah. got to be his hand. That, I, th I think that's 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 why I'm sad about the lettering. Because, like, it's just like, dude, just have the confidence and do it. Because, yeah. because this is great. Especially, is like, not. you see these sound effects and it's like, oh, yeah, that's that really trash. is uh, hurtful. Yeah, especially when you took the time to like do all these other cool ones. There's a motif of like Elvis coming through as they get into Vegas. We'll yeah. see Elvis in a couple of issues. 
Cartoonist Kayfabe is brought to you by the comic books that we make. Uh, we appreciate you guys supporting our projects and the current stuff that we have on the shelves right now. Jim Rugg, Hulk Grand Design, both issues, uh, Monster and Madness are out there on the stands. These are the regular covers. Comic shops out there, you know what your marching orders are. You know how to stack these on the shelves. And uh, you got these other variant covers that you could get your hands on to support the, uh, the, the work. You got the Jeff Darrow cover for Madness. You got the Ed McGinnis cover for Madness. And with the uh, first issue, uh, Monster, Peach Bamboko, the Eddie P, and the Marcos Morton variant covers. Congratulations, Jimmy. I know this was a long project in the works. The other stuff that Jimmy has in print, Plain Jane's, the first young adult graphic novel, and various volumes of the hardcover graphic albums of Street Angel are still in print, still in good comic shops, still can be ordered online in volume. Support the work. Right now on the stands, uh, as per the Ed Piscor comics that are out there, Red Room, Trigger Warnings, Issue 1, 2, and potentially Issue number 3 are out there in the wild. Issue 2, The Pumpkins Issue. Look at that for a splash page, man. You can uh, get these comics online uh, at Fantagraphics website and various comic shops. It is banned in 26 countries. It is banned in 10 comic shops. But you could also read these comics before they hit paper on uh, my Patreon, patreon.com slash Ed Piscor, three bucks for the archive there. Uh, last season's Red Room uh, efforts, Red Room, the anti-social network trade paperback out there in the wild collecting uh, four issues of comics and lots of extra material. The works that I have out there in the wild right now, I do think WYSIWYG is currently out of print, but if you see it, scoop it up. Four volumes, Hip Hop Family Tree, including two giant box sets and 12 issues of comics. The guys at Fantagraphics just told me my royalty statements have hit Clausian and Hernandez <laughs> Brothers numbers, 42 pages of uh, royalty statement, Jimmy. And uh, the Grand Design that started them all, three volumes, X-Men Grand Design, including an omnibus that is out of print and hard to find, but if you see it, scoop it up. Now that we're done paying the bills, back to the video. Oh, everybody's name except Liefeld. And I think you got an Al Gordon reference because that'll be out one of the comics, Wildstar. Yeah, there's an, there's an ad in there. I'm surprised Liefeld's not in there because we're going to see a Supreme guest star in issue three. So Yeah, and there's a Die Hard on a TV somewhere. It in would, this wouldn't issue. shock me if uh, Liefeld's the way That's so British. Giffen gets into into here. You know, I could see him being a fan. The guns are really, I kind of like the guns a lot. You think of that image gun as being like a square. Very different approach to the guns that Giffen is bringing uh, with Trencher. <laughs> like, Anytime you can recognize what's going on, like, okay, there's your Die Hard on TV. But little kitchen table set up, that stuff looks kind of believable. Even, like, the uh, the doily hanging over the edge. And then Trencher looks like he's nine feet tall sitting there. I mean, there is vaguely a, a Jeff Darrow piece yeah, to this. Yeah, I thought that, too. I thought that, too. And especially once they get, like, super... Uh, Violent. Some of that's even the most like hard boiled stuff where it's just he's just an arm and a body crawling around. Yeah, the like when he brings his shit together, skates. like th that's 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 clear line. Yeah, it's true. You know, it's just this other stuff is kind of wild. See, this is like almost like Kevin O'Neill has some yes. of this. You know, there's the Mister Hyde. Definitely uh, body body type nasal python with, with the <laughs> nose for the A's. And you can imagine this could be in like a, a martial law villain or something. Absolutely, a hundred percent. And there's your there's wild star uh, pin up there. But the extra material we always talk about how you know you have your editorial page and that explains most of the characters. So you get some of that here. <laughs> Deathmate Black to um, give you a snapshot of time. One of the great uh, gimmick covers. And you know what? I'm gonna do a plug real quick, man, for for a comics tropes. <laughs> He did a uh, he did an episode on variant covers and gimmicks and like the history of variant covers. Fantastic episode! Ooh, man, that does sound good. I like seeing like what is going on here. Cyberforce Zero, your Walt Simonson Cyberforce issue. Yeah, Freak Force starting up, which which he cited as being his biggest money maker ever. Weird world. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of the most incoherent comics ever. Plugging understanding comics. Yeah, and an even worse font. It's incredible. So uh, here's something that's neat. Once we get to issue number two, we replace the T with Trencher just walking away with uh, the giant arms and everything sticking out. Genius. I'm going to just keep flipping because I, I do like this art. Yeah. And, uh, if people don't know this at home, it's a chance to at least see this stuff. 
And it is a book that you probably can track down because this is right around uh, bubbles getting ready to burst. One of the things I wanted to make note of is the uh, the page numbers. And it made me think, like, was this some sort of influence for you when you were doing Super Mag uh, with, your, with your page numbers? Not consciously, but I do love the page numbers here, like each page being treated differently. Always figures out a different way to spell like out the number. That. And here's the stuff, like, it's just an arm. Like, you see bones sticking out. And he's just hopping or hopping along on his one arm. Like, pretty inventive. If you're going to do an image comic, like, to the extreme, having a one-arm torso is what's left of this fight. That feels in line with the image extreme superhero stylings. Yeah, one of the things he's doing is he's leaving that clear line, like, for the color to do a lot of the talking, which is not what any other image comic was doing like this looks like no other image comic in a million different ways but that's definitely something there's very there's no spotting blacks no uh in this thing i see tiny bits of uh family values <laughs> 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 is frank miller lifting some ideas for miho from uh chernobyl yeah, this right here <laughs> <laughs> look at how mangled her like her head is just barely hanging on yeah good luck man i can't tell what i'm looking at oh yeah there's a skull in there Right, is that a skull? Yes. That looks like lethargic lad. Totally wild. And, uh, of course... What's wow, it? Ed. Obs what's our Jeff? theme this week? <laughs> Good Lord, that's three for three. That's without it. trying. Yeah, right. <laughs> Choking a chicken. How about that for in a word balloon? Yeah. Do all your lettering like that. Wouldn't get any complaints here. I've seen that. Like, I, yeah. gotta, I gotta look for some of those comics. I can't, I can't think of what I've they I've seen are. Brandon Graham do a lot of that. Like whole conversations? I don't know about whole conversations, but it wouldn't surprise me if I, he has. He's done quite a bit. I, I, that's who I think of when I think of that effect. But I, like manga, I've seen manga that does that a really little bit. Really cool sound effect there. Guy being thrown out of, through the window works well. Even the background detail of the car with the big fins, I Beautiful. like that. Nearly a dick and balls. <laughs> Probably not an accident on that. <laughs> you just can't think what is going on there. Oh, the hurler. His <laughs> villain for this. Is, the, the guy he's fighting this issue is like uh, vomiting acidic vomit is his uh, weapon of choice. And, you know, some of the storytelling, like you're starting to be able to see a little bit, right? Like the figures, no backgrounds. So the figures, just two figures, pretty clear. Almost silhouettes. Feels like a nearly standard, you know, superhero drawing but in the midst of the trencher world this is so funny like this is this uh city's defender and the city's like i don't know flagstaff or somewhere like some random place where he ends up and this is your local superhero i don't know what that is yeah it didn't leak through the page so you know this is a uh, a dollar pool from somewhere and i have no idea what that is just a little fecal matter don't say that <laughs> how about supreme clearly set in the uh image universe and how much does the Supreme logo stand out whenever you put it on a page with this art? He drew the gauntlets wrong. <laughs> and Chernobyl gets her profile. So, the other stuff that I would point to if people are watching this and going, this is amazing art, I've never seen anything like this. Images of Shadowhawk 1-3 to three is Keith Giffen. It might even be, like, the best version of this style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he... he it, he just starts the style pretty much like at the, at the end of that Lobo, like you said, yes. and, 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 and explores it in Trencher. So it, t it takes a couple pages. You got to get some pages under your belt. I think it's cool that it's like uh, Alan Grant, the other Lobo writer. Absolutely. And they don't they don't lose that. Yeah, uh, it's that's genius. not lost on anybody. Um, our back matter is this poly bag scam. Scrag the bag contest. What is going on in comics at this point? Like he spends the next couple of back matters just talking about this this yeah. idea of like rip it out of the bag these poly bag comics don't keep it in there hey fuck your cgc's uh 1963 super cool tie it together with art by jim lee in the 1963 annual dun, there's dun, not even dun, cover dun. art for any of these things they were as soon as they could get somebody to sign up for this like alan moore you're gonna do this let's run the ad no wonder all this stuff's late <laughs> little shaman's tears do you still got your shaman's tears issues i have a couple issues I got about eight yeah, it ran for twi twice through Image because like it was canceled with that first wave of cancellations and then comes back. We're, we're gonna have to by fuck popular the, demand. We're gonna have to fuck with these ones, man. Like these these weird like uh, like Al Gordon's Wild Star and Sean I would look at that stuff that for stuff, sure. Man. Gen X never heard of it. <laughs> and there is your Shadowhawk <laughs> two cover gimmick visually explained. There's like some extra knuckles, a couple extra elbows in that arm. That's hilarious. Um, the Supreme fight is kind of fun. He has to uh, to power up in order to get through this Supreme fight. But again, like it's almost working out this style on these pages because this is the most clear 
probably image that yeah. we've seen so far. You know, I think he's figuring it out. It's like Baxter paper. I'm sad that he doesn't stick with it beyond that Shadowhawk series. But again, like I would recommend that one. And it's probably one we'll look at. He's he's an interesting creator. Like like I said, man, he had his Kirby run. He 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 had his uh why do I keep keep saying Nino? Well, who's the Alex Center? Um the oh, artist. Um It's not Sampeo who's the writer, Munoz. Yes, Munoz. I feel you terrible. Just, you for just heard my whole thought that. process. Uh and then he There's like, your Vegas this. Uh, sign lettering. And then and then like what what's he 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 went to a kind of a standard style or just became a writer or something. I don't know. He, he does so much different stuff. Like Doctor Fate is one that people always, uh, or Fate, I guess, the miniseries that he did, does a lot of comedy, which people weren't really doing in comics at Marvel and DC at that time. So certainly, there's a large body of work. That's a nice sound. Fifi's effect. mad at us. Yeah, man. he's pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> Giffen has his fans, man, his devotees, yeah, very and much. I can see why. That Supreme's pretty fun. It is big chin cleft, a little Ben Edlin-ish. and he does. Trencher does this uh, trick where he powers up like it's almost like cable where he has access to some other dimensional I don't know what I had no idea that that cable has that oh yeah man that's the Mignola issue right where he goes to that like future uh, dimension or wherever he's from but nice money shot here so I would say that's your uh, your Trencher sample four issues from Image the uh, Christmas Bites 1994 Holiday Blowout from Black Ball Comics. So I guess Trencher was one of those titles that got cut from Image whenever um, Image cut a bunch of that second wave. It's so funny because this really is like the beginning of the second wave and then like the end of the second wave. <laughs> it didn't last long. It could be a year span though. Like like <laughs> when these guys get these big checks, and I'm not saying that Keith Giffen because he seems like a professional. Like I right. don't know if we I got... think he delivered these on time. Yeah, like what are the dates? That's always a tell. First one... May so May to October a little bit more than than four there but yeah but he's not doing bad it all, you what know? is that he's four issues it. in five months that's pretty good for yeah, an image good. book uh, in year Better two than I can do keeps up the same kind of layout whenever he goes to uh, black ball but now we're on coded paper which is a difference but I thought it was neat to see there's his line art uncolored you know like a pretty good shot of trencher pretty fascinating he'll do this like double line thing mm-hmm. he goes over every line two times and doesn't worry about if it matches or just boldens like there's a space there's like a little gap in between all that stuff you know what happens i'm not sure which issue i think it's in this one his head gets ripped off oh man i should i should have flagged it his head gets ripped off at one point i think it might be with the supreme fight and then he's carrying around his head uh you know the rest of the issue like his body grabs his head and off they go with it um but i did want to show just a couple of these things with the glossy print so you, you know, can kind of like see this. um it keeps getting more clear. You know, like, I think he keeps figuring out the system. Yeah, it's... Oh, dude, now we're getting into, like, Sergio Aragones. That's true. But also, like, um, the Filipino DC cartoonist would have this kind of line art, in a way. Like, the thick thick and thin of it. Yeah, it's... it's like, like a Nino or somebody. It's a good run. So, if you guys uh, enjoy this video, share it, spread it around, because I'd like to look at a little bit more of this Giffen era of stuff and uh there's more to look at that shadowhawk series is pretty sharp yeah, yeah, yeah and so is infanticide for that matter you know um that's an interesting one to see the i guess the origins of this style let's fox with it man uh you good to go yes okay favors like follow subscribe to the youtube channel at the bell we'll notify you when new vids are available what's out there jim hulk grand design monster and hulk grand design madness are available in finer comic shops everywhere while supplies last i am retelling the 60 year history of the incredible hulk and by retelling i mean i'm writing penciling inking coloring and lettering the whole thing myself so pick that one up whenever you go to the comic shop and uh join me on patreon.com slash jim rug red room trigger warnings issue number one and two in stores now issue three forthcoming or potentially in stores uh, as we speak murder on the dark web for fun and profit is the name of the game in red room comics hyper violent hyper crucial hyper gory uh, you can get these comics at your local comic shop if it's a good one, but it is banned in 26 countries. It is banned in 10 uh, less than good uh, comic shops. Uh, you can order these comics, though, uh, online at my link tree in the description below this video. It'll take you to the Fantagraphics website when all else fails. You can get direct from the publisher. Uh, you can also read these comics today uh, on my Patreon, patreon.com slash Ed Piscor. Three bucks for the archive there. 
and uh, more than 200 pages are up there as we speak. I put up new pages every Tuesday. Uh, what else do we have out there, Jim? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. That's another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Jim, give them the marching orders. We'll be on our way. Read more comics.